Okay, so you guys are following along after this kidnapped dwarf. There's been signs of um, the demi bird, and what you're picking is a scout dragon ute following along um, beside. Um, the uh, tracks have sort of gone for a wee way, and you've um, you're keeping good time. You think that you're actually catching up. Um, well. I'll just go past it. You're pretty sure that you're catching up um, over the course of a day. And uh, there has been no signs of him uh, footprints or of him walking. So you're picking that he's on um, bird back. So um, we broke with you guys. I think you had the camp for the evening. First question. Oh, yeah. So mobility. So the dwarf has um, been casting... Uh, mobility on everyone uh, well, sorry haste the, the sorcery spell so that uh, you guys can make good time so he can cast that again today if you guys are sort of are keen to actually do so it didn't feel any different than sort of when other magic is cast on you but it is foreign magic and something that is something that you guys are not really uh, au fait with and not particularly comfortable with but having said that um, you were running as fast as the wind effectively um, you, you, know, you guys have never been any faster in fact it's even faster than what um, you would generally travel Saren when you cast your mobility spell so Yaganvar are you happy enough to have um, haste cast on you again today I do not mind do not mind okay so old silver tongue this time brings everyone together and casts it casts the spell in one go uh, rather than in two separate goes like he did the previous day he says that he can make it even faster today if you guys are keen but it will have an effect that um, you will lose an extra fatigue point he doesn't say this in game mechanics, but effectively what it'll mean is that you guys lose an extra fatigue point every hour um, so that if anything does happen, you will be um, starting to suffer um, from fatigue probably by the end of the day. Is He's asking this generally to everyone or just the yeah. humans? He said, um, so he looks at everyone and says, says I, I can cast this even more powerful if you want, but... The, the problem is that you end up being a little bit tired as the day goes on. He said, it's all good if we're just getting from A to B, but uh, I'm not sure if we want to be uh, running into some dragon newts and uh, not being in the best of form. Yeah, Umgar and uh, Gort agree with that latter reasoning. So you just want to stay at the, the, your fast speed, not the super fast speed. I okay, so he sort of mum goes off and spends about a minute or so uh, mumbling to himself and sort of um, making sure that everyone stays in a circle around him to um, to do it. And you, you guys are a bit more aware now of him and his magic and what he's doing, and you you see him. You know, there's definitely like a a. Um, almost like a, a ripple, a ball of sort of um, blurry light in and around his hands and hands, and then he reaches out and touches um, all of you sort of one after the other um, in the space of a couple of seconds, just sort of touches you, and you can feel the difference of the, um, the hay spells actually starting to take over. Um, he says, tonight, this this will last into tonight if you just want to continue into the into at least sort of a couple of hours into the night. Um, I can uh, cast some light if we need to, but uh, if not, at least it's still there. But he said uh, it will need to be recast in the morning again if we're actually still going. How much longer do you expect us to be traveling for? <laughs> well, um, he says, well, I've got no idea how, how much closer we've got. Um, <laughs> you guys are the ones that are used to sort of running along behind these uh, interesting creatures, or or at least in behind creatures. Uh, you and you and your friend there, you know, do you, how far do you think that we've actually come compared to them? 
I mean, we're not the ones that walk on legs like yours. Even if the magic does help rather, rather much. So basically, a um, like humans travel at um, three meters per strike rank. Um, dwarves travel at two meters per strike rank, and your average horse travels at about ten meters per strike rank. Um, but a horse, in general, will only sort of, um, you know, unless it's being pushed. Um, will only generally travel half as much to maybe twice again from what a human can do um, just at the same ambling speed. But, you know, they can travel three times the distance if sort of on good good ground and being able to be pushed. So the demi-birds tend to be running at about the same sort of speed as a, um, a horse, um, but it's not being pushed hard from what you can see. So you're probably a day behind them, maybe a little bit more, because you're ca you're you're ca uh, covering twice the distance at the moment. Fair enough. A day behind them at this speed, or a day behind them with the fastness on? Um, you're pretty sure that you go you guys started off about two days behind them, and um, you reckon that you're about a day behind them at the moment. So if you don't catch up with them to within the stay, then there's a fairly good chance you will um, get them sort of sometime early on the next day. But that will make a big difference. Um, so if you can um, do a track roll for me, please. Uh, Saren or Yagenda or both. Um, okay, I'll try. Nope. That's a no-go. Okay. So, about mid-morning, you guys have sort of been able to follow along quite easily, and then um, you get to a point where there's a bit of hard ground, there's a, a lot more rock, you're just struggling to find any clear tracks. Um, this demi-bird's pretty big, like, so it's been leaving fairly clear marks up until now. Is it just the one? Just as, like, up until now, all you've seen is the signs of one demi bird and a scout. Um, you had, like, uh, when they got to the camp situation, um, you find tracks of a larger dragon newt there as well, and you can see a large, heavy mark that's been sort of thrown on the ground and you know, basically tossed down like a sack, um, not really moved that much, but then sort of has been picked up and moved. That was from the earlier day. But uh, now you've got to a point where you're just not sure where the tracks go. So the general direction has been somewhere in around that sort of south, southeast bearing from where you are. Um, if you look around, you, you can't see anything overly much. Um, you know, it's a combination of broken and rough ground at the present with a few trees, um, not big foresty areas. It's relatively rocky and barren in comparison, but um, you know, there still is sort of smaller cover in that um, that you can actually uh, find. Okay, so uh, you spend about five minutes looking around and you cannot find any clear tracks anymore. Hmm. Well, down. Looks like we've lost the track. Is there anything you dwarves can do to help at all? Up until now, sort of, they've, they've never admitted it, but <laughs> no, we're sort of not even really sure what it is that you've been following. We wondered if you had been sniffing the earth. <laughs> Bugger. Is there a, um, a Dragon Ute road that do we know that we're on? You're not far off. Yeah, you're not far off one. Um, you know that... Um, actually, can I get a world law roll, please, out of um, everyone? A what roll? A world law. Just missed. Sweet. So, Yaganva, you know um, from your your studies and sort of you know, exactly um, 
of what uh, Saren was talking about. So from up in the, uh, was it northeast down to the, um, through Dragon's Eye down to the southwest, um, there is a big track that the dragon newts are known to uh, follow along. Um, and it runs pretty much a straight line right the way across. Okay, and um, you think that if you continued on in the direction you're going, that within a number of hours to sort of the rest of the day, you would be back on to um, this Dragon Newt Road. So um, they've um, people see the Dragon Newt walking this um, trekking along in groups along that path, and it's something that. You've got no idea what the hell they do it for, but um, it is seen on regular occasions. Okay. Well, that's all we've got to go on, unless I'm missing something. So I suggest we head in that general direction and see if we can pick the tracks up again. You guys all good with that? I mean, sure. Toodling off. Um, you're still going to keep looking for tracks, Saren? Yep, for sure. Tracks and scanning the horizon to see whether there's anything that we can see off in the distance. Yeah. So you continue for another couple of hours, and then uh, if you give me a search roll, please. I okay. Do. So from mid morning, you'd uh, lost the tracks. As you guys are covering the distance, you're basically um, scouting around out ahead, sort of fanning across, looking for um, what is around. And after a while, you sort of go, ha, ah, I think I've got it. I found Demi Bird tracks. And you followed along for a little bit uh, further. And then you actually see that, yes, there's just a single Demi Bird uh, with a, um, what looks to be the smaller scout um, riding along beside, running along beside. Um, you're fairly confident that you actually found the tracks again. The, the thought does go through... Um, you hear that the, the tracks just seem to be changing direction slightly. Um, they've sort of almost cut back um, to a, an angle that would be perpendicular to, to meet the road. So you, you, you think that they can't be too far now off, off where the road is. This guy I suggest we get a bit of a wriggle on. What time of day is it? Uh, midday now. Can Dragon Newt see in the dark? You have no idea. No, I have. That's exactly spot on. Would we have an idea with the world lore? No. Um, yeah, do you pass on that information, Saren? What, that I don't know whether they can see uh, in the dark? Well, just the fact that the, um, the angle's changing and that, yes, you can uh, clearly see where they're going. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'll, I'll explain what I'm doing as I'm going along and, and what I think they're doing. Okay. Silver Tongue sort of pipes up and says, uh, I don't mean to be uh, problematic, but if they're heading towards the road, and the road is where dragon newts are regularly seen, does that mean we're going to run into more of them? Quite probably. And also, we're not necessarily going to know, unless we catch up with them at the road or before the road, we're not going to know which way they turn. This could be a problem. It certainly can. Um, are we still mobility? Can we can we double mobility? <laughs> um, so while you were away, uh, the conversation in the morning was that um, he could cast it faster, but you guys would be starting to suffer um, extra fatigue every hour, and so that um, if you ran into something, you could be at a, a minus. Gotcha. Yeah, that's fair enough. Well, other than being at a loss, I suggest we just make great haste and try and catch up with them. And we can't even cut across, really, because we don't know which way they're, which way they're going to head. Yeah. Barreling it along, and about two in the afternoon, you find um, signs of a camp from, you're pretty sure it was the previous night before. Very simple camp just set up there's only really the sign the only real sort of telltale elements to it are the fact that um you've gone from just demi bird and scout 
tracks to um, there's some bigger footprints walking around and obviously signs where the um, the dwarf has been dumped on the ground again can I get a search roll please from Saren and can I get one from Yaganvar in fact actually from everyone please Got nothing for you Ooh, good. Yeah, you go. Okay, you find tra- uh, signs of blood. Good. You uh, ah, there's blood here. You're looking around. You see the um, where everyone was, and then you see signs of blood, and it heads off away from the direction. Um, yeah, that's as much as you can tell. There's a blood trail going in this direction. Does it, and it just looks like normal red blood? You have a look at it and sort of, well, it seems blood, yeah. It doesn't seem to be anything sort of particularly weird. It's a dark stain on the ground. Um, can you notice that the, um, the drops are relatively spread, um, which either suggests that uh, something was moving at speed or was a larger unit. So, uh, do you want to give me a track roll? Just having a look around just to see what information you can find. No, nothing. CSI has failed me. Cool. Okay. So, what do we think? Did we do? It? Do we think this is your friend or somebody else that's joined the party that's a bit worse for wear? Well, I have not the slightest. Me either. So that was. There's one way to find out for certain. So I'll just give you this bit of information before you do any more. So you guys have come in, say, on a um, twenty degrees off north um, bearing. So coming down, um, basically. Uh, 200 degrees on the compass um this track you know there's um this track has sort of shot off basically um on a 90 degree tangent to that heading in a westernish route there is a lot of disturbance in and around the the campsite itself you're not a hundred percent certain of sort of what it is because it's um very mixed up and your rolls were so bad looking at it though it's not like the previous campsite where everything was relatively simple, clear and order, orderly, where the, um, the scout had sort of obviously um, run around and looked after um, the other dragon ute. You know, there's a lot of footprints in and out and potentially looks like there's a horde of prints coming in from um, one, one side off to the um, southeast that may have caused uh, whatever it was to run away. Yeah, basically where you are, you can't read any prints directly in and around the campsite just because it's too cluttered. So if you want to look for anything else, you've got to search a little bit wider. I'm, I'm surmising that they've been attacked, maybe. Could be those lunars causing mischief. I think we've come to the same conclusion as far as what happened. Well, maybe we should just, if we, um, if we get a move on, especially if it's getting towards the end of the night, we could... Um, and so we could attempt to travel through the night to continue to catch up with them. I hope we get to them before the um, Dragon Ute Road. If they reach the road, I don't think we're ever going to catch up. Although, Yagan would scratch at his jaw a bit. Can those roads transport other people than Dragon Utes the way they do? I'm not really sure what's going to happen when, every, when they do reach that. Yeah, damn. Silver Tongue looks at you and says, I have got no idea myself either um so what 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 ran that way i see if i can find the any track specific to the the group that have moved off from the camp okay so you go scouring around the outside of the camp looking tasting a bit of ground and sniffing and sort of licking trees finding and... a bit of back guano and licking it just to see how old it is Yep. Okay. So, um, give me a give me a search roll and a track roll. Nice. Bang. Okay. 
special yep, the and I'll give that a bonus to the track just to so that was the track yep. and uh, Yagamo can give me a search as well cool nice okay so you guys are looking around looking for the different prints uh, uh, Yagamo is off to say the southwest of the camp yeah, somebody else hey I've got tra I've got tracks here um, I can see two dragon newts walking off to the um, southwest um, at about the same time Justin sort of yells out oh I've got tracks here too uh, they look a bit different but uh, they're heading off to the to the southeast and uh, I'm fucking sure there's a big heavy dwarf in amongst them fantastic uh, um, do those tracks look dragon newtish as well, or are they different species? He can't tell you on the tracks. He just found the prints themselves, um, but couldn't necessarily follow the tracks enough. Or um, he definitely recognises the scout track. Well, I suggest we 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 bowl on to the um, keep following the dwarf track. I suggest. Okay, so your special was on your search roll, wasn't it? Correct, yeah. Okay, um, you pick up some funny little pellets. You know, they're, they're made of a little metal. They've got uh, like pointy bits on the outside. Um, Similar to what Silver Tongue was dropping? No, like these here, um, you're looking at them and you're trying to work it out, but you know, they seem to be relatively small units um but there's a group of them just dropped on the ground uh looks probably by accident uh if you and they're yeah. metal and it's a it's a metal that you're not overly familiar with but um can you give me a roll uh, just an in roll uh, yep i'll also show it to the dwarves and say what's have you seen this kind of metal before looks don't know it at all and if I did, I've completely forgotten because that was a shitty roll. Yeah. Um, can you give me a mineral or roll, please, Court? Yes. I was just looking <laughs> to see if there was a, sp a specific uh, metal lore, so I was checking um, Umgar's, but I'm glad to hear it's a mineral lore. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa. You rolled, um, yeah. Pretty averagely look at it and you hiss, um, it's lead. Um, those are bowl. Mm. Those are bulgs. Is that the name of the dwarf who's captured? No, those are troll coins. Oh, okay. And um, they're sometimes used as ammunition. Oh, no. Now I fear the worst. Uh, trolls, lunars, dragging newts, what the... So... It, it's getting better and better. Just to be clear, we're tossed in... Sorry, Torpass found the um, troll coin was with the group that the dwarf was obviously with? Yep. Okay. Yeah. I... So, so not lunars, trolls. Uh, you have a good search around, and you can see prints heading to the southeast again, but um, trollish at the moment. That's the best that you can say is trollish. Hmm. There's a there's a group of like you can't really work out how many were in the group um, because it's all over top of each other. Um, the only thing that you can tell for any certainty is that this big heavy dwarf has been pushed along and is sort of you know fallen a couple of times and been dragged up. Yeah, you can't sort of glean any more information at the moment. So Umgar is going to say something to Gort and Dwarvish, and then Gort's going to suggest um, we need to follow that trail and with due haste. We need to follow this quickly. Okay, so looking. Uh, do you guys want to actually inspect the tracks anymore or have a look around the campsite? I myself am a bit panicked, so I'm just wanting to rush. I'll give it a brief scan, but yeah, I think uh, we'd be better off just, just plowing forward. Okay. So, um, Jagenvar, can I get a 
Int times five roll, please. From me? Yep. Okay. That okay. is a success. Mm, check out the brains <laughs> on the ground. So that's an int times two, isn't it, for you? That's just times two. <laughs> Yep, th 36 is times two, yep, so, um... Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, um, Yagava sort of has looked at what Tostin's pointed out, um, and sort of compared... To, sorry, Saren. yes, Saren, get the right bloody character. Um, okay, you realise, um, Yagava, that, um, the two dragon newts are, are actually walking now? Um, on the tracks that you were looking at. So you're surmising that the um, blood that was heading off in the other direction was more than likely a demi-bird, and, and that the two <laughs> um, dragon newts are now on foot. Could it be possible that they got attacked by trolls that were just wanted to eat something? Very possible. Could we... Jorgenfa points that out, points over, uh, well, the blood trails, and he goes, I believe that these dragon newts met their match in something of a troll huntsman, or three, and that the trolls made off with their bird. Like, there's no remains of the bird, is there? Nope. Not even feathers? Trolls um, don't eat anything. No, nothing that's sort of specifically looking... Um, you know, there's this no big um, pile of feathers where someone something's being plucked or anything. And was the blood going off in the same direction as what we're assuming are the trolls, or it was off in, its went own off in the other direction, almost opposite direction initially? Um, but you haven't sort of looked to see where it ended up. And but we think that the dwarf is still with the the two dragon newts no. on foot now, though. No, he's with the party that you um, the tracks that you found, Saren. Yep, so Jagenvar was following the dragon new tracks, you were following the other tracks. They've split off in basically like a 90 degree separation. So just to be clear, the, are there three directions that the tracks go off? The the trolls, for want of a better word, the two dragon newts on foot, and then the separate bloodied yep. demi-bird. And um, after having had a look around, uh, there was definitely something following the demi-bird. Well, I'm wondering whether if the dwarf was on the demi bird, is it worth checking that out first uh, to see if it's no. You definitely over found signs of the the big heavy dwarf having hit the ground uh, on the tracks that were um, with the troll party. Oh, with the yep. troll party. Well, that we definitely don't want to attack at night time. Ah, unless they did attack at night and now they're holed up somewhere. I'm assuming that we know that trolls are dark, yep. not darkness, yep. night animals. Beasts, whatever. Nocturnal. Yeah, well, given given that you were at a campsite, there's a fairly good chance that they were attacked during the night. Yeah. So, um, from mm. a little bit more studying around, sort of um, Jagenvar being the brains of the party, sort of looks and says, looks like they're attacked. Um, the demi bird was sort of um, hit and has taken off, and it looks like there's a number of some things have gone and followed off after the demi bird, um, and the tracks from the dragon newts heading southwest uh, seem to be a little bit fresher. Like so, not uh, they were made say early in the morning, um, whereas the tracks going off to the southeast that you'd found uh, definitely seem to have been just that little bit older. So probably. Uh, were made during the night. Fair enough. So, in a, uh, are we in agreement that we assume that the tro the um, the trolls trolls again have taken the dwarf, or we should head off that way, see if we can catch them unawares before it gets dark. Aye. Okay. So, again, um, uh, with Jagenvar being the brains of the party. Um, He's like, okay, we're probably about 12 hours behind um, the trolls. So, you know, there is a good chance that they are not that far ahead of us. You know, as you said, we really don't want to sort of meet up with them at night. Um, what are we going to do to um, just keep an eye out uh, scouting-wise? 
Or do we want to scout forward and see if we can identify them in the daytime, at least so we can pinpoint them? Brains. Okay. So anything, um, nothing else that you guys want to do here before you head off? Nothing that I can think of. Cool. Okay, can I get a party order, please? Yeah, oh, God. Um, what are we doing it from top um, being front? Ping where I am at the moment. We're going to be heading to the right of the page. So whoever's in front sort of over there and then the uh, rest of the party going back towards the left. I'll take the lead. Okay, Yagava, whereabouts would you like to be exactly where you are? I don't really mind. And also, you're not messing around with the map, are you? Because if so, then I can't see it. Yeah, no, that seems about right. Cool. So, you beetle off about an hour in. Uh, can I get a track roll, please? Oh, fuck. Fumble. Oof. I found a dragon. I mean, we're what we're walking on a dragon's back right now. <laughs> <laughs> Saren, it's not a good idea to be looking for tracks and scuffing your feet along at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> or, uh, oh, I found some tracks. Let's go around this tree. Hmm, seems to be following me. <laughs> round and round. It's a good thing that Jagenbauer's there just to tell you that you are right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, again, you sort of get to an area a little bit rocky, a little bit, um, what's the word? Not the easiest place to actually track on. Um, you have seen uh, signs clearly of the dwarf being um, dragged along, pushed. Um, interesting that um, there is no drag marks of the dwarf. When he hits the ground, he just hits the ground. Um, the tracks are all, have all been tuned up. Um, it's really has been just about impossible to differentiate any given um, thing other than the than the actual dwarf hitting the ground. And then all of a sudden there is nothing. You've just lost, um, not quite sure what to do. So um, your options are basically double back a bit and try and sort of pick up the tracks from that point again, but there's a chance that you guys have just sort of um, killed, killed them as well, yeah. Um, continue in the same direction or um, look for another means to go and explore. Dragon roads are rather, are fairly powerful magical, like they're, they're those standing stones that they just travel along bit by bit, sipping along, yes? Pretty close to that, yep. Yeah. I can't remember the detail. Is it at all possible for me to have my inner second sight pick anything of that nature up while we move along, are there any magical currents that just kind of flow from one place to another that could make it slightly easier for me to figure out just what's going on here? It's a very confusing sort of, um, you feel, you feel, um, as you sort of approach towards the road, a bit more magic, but you haven't actually got to the road yet. Um, but you think that you can't be too far off. Um, from the second sight point of view, there's a lot of stuff around. Like it's definitely a um, a more heightened magical. I can't think of the words to describe it, but you definitely find um, like there's not a lot of spirits congregated, but you definitely f feel and can see bits and pieces that suggest that um you know it is definitely a more magically charged area uh, probably the only other way around it would be to um just cooperate and go and have a look that way but then you're not quite sure what that's going to be like on the other side 
Could I maybe could I maybe try could I maybe try speaking to one of the spirits that I can see? They might they might know directions, you know. There's there's nothing stopping me from asking them. Um you can have a crack. The I'm just trying to think what would be the most location. I know they're not generally the most lucid or sensible sorts, but I can try. Most of the stuff that you can see is generally tied to the landscape features at the moment. Um, so it's more like the odd plant spirit or um, um, you know, a couple of, say, animal spirits that are there. Um, there's nothing that's particularly smart that you can see at the moment, but probably the easiest way to do it yeah, you'd, ha you'd have to probably discorporate at the moment. Um, do you have the visibility spell? Um, no, and also discorporating without casting the spell takes an hour, and I don't want to take an hour. Basically, you commune, is how I'll describe it, and you can't find a lot of detail from the more, um, like, the animal-type spirits. Um, after a while, though, you do sort of find a landscape, keep thinking of a naiad, but um, a rock spirit effectively is the easiest way to describe it, uh, that says that um, dark creatures um, went this way uh, recently. That's about the best that you can get. I guess I'll just vaguely guess you to that way and go that way, give or take. He tries to have good eyes, but it's hard. It's taken a while to sort of find this, so it's all you can say is that you're heading in the same general direction um, that you were originally sort of moving in. Like you've probably walked a good sort of half a kilometre uh, or more just trying to find out the information, and you would say that you're still generally heading in that sort of southeasterly direction. That sounds good. It's the only lead we've got to go on. Okay, so by now you're well into mid-afternoon. Um, after a while, um, again, roll search and track. Okay. Ooh. Oh. Oh. Oh, no. for fuck's sake. Two in a row. Yes. Rolling for track. Okay, that's not as good. But I got my search roll, so there's that. Well, hopefully that's the fumbles out of my system for the evening, because that's that's not good. The dwarf is actually doing a better job tracking than Saren. <laughs> yep. So, summing it up. I got my up, search, but I failed the track. Okay, so the people that have found um, succeeded in search rolls, that's Gort. I got a special. Jagenvar's got a special. Okay. Oh, I succeeded okay. in search, so, but fumbled with a hundred for the track. Okay, track. So everyone that succeeded in a search roll has found a few um, bulbs. Has found um, a bit of off cast um, bones, etc. Um, um, yeah, it's like someone's been eating food as they've travelled and sort of just thrown bits and pieces away. Um, the special success... Not bits and pieces yeah. of dwarf. The special success, there's a... Um, you find a mark on a rock that is clearly like a dwarf has crashed into it and he's used his iron armour to gouge a mark on the rock to try and sort of say this is the way he's been. Clever. Yeah, and it's definite signs. You can see this this dwarf is uh, obviously being pushed hard, um, you know, because it's every so often um, all of a sudden there's a big clunk where he's hit the ground. You're not sure if that's actually done on purpose or the fact that they're pushing him so hard. Okay, did anyone actually succeed in a track roll? Nope, just a search. Okay, so again, you're you're not a, not a hundred percent in the southeasterly direction, but you're generally heading in that that direction. 
and off we go again. Mm-hmm. Is anyone collecting the bulbs? I mean, how many are there? Because you need a lot of bulbs before they become worth anything. <laughs> yeah. So far, you've collected about 22 bulbs. Yeah, see, that that's pretty much what I'm talking about, mate. You can buy a fucking pastry with that. It's... <laughs> You know what? Sure. I've sure, got a sure. bow, and this is RuneQuest 3 fatigue. They're quite heavy, aren't they? Uh, Bogs is like 160 or something to the encumbrance. If someone else wants to collect them, you can do so, but Yarganvar isn't very strong, so I'm not going to bother. Yeah, and none of the dwarves are interested in them. Surely lead is a valuable metal, surely. Fucking troll metal. Silver tank just sort of wrinkles his nose and says, ah, fucking troll metal. Uh, Yagenvar, your magic points are back. I just had a look at the screen. Is it still showing that you've now only got 12 magic points? Okay. So this is now sort of getting to mid, mid to late afternoon and you sort of keep heading off down. Again, we'll sort of uh, give it another hour or so, and can we have both a search roll and a track roll, please? Again, search and track? Sure. Yep. Yay, track. I got a track, man, man. Someone succeeded on a track roll. Stop the fucking presses. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and um, Saren succeeds on a search. But failed on the trick. Okay. For a change. Didn't fumble though, yeah. Yeah. You guys find signs of a troll campsite. Um Yaganvar, you're looking at the campsite and where people have settled down and you think for trolls these aren't the biggest fit footprints. I mean troll can are a thing. Yeah. But like, um, you know, you, you put your foot down on the ground next to one of these footprints and it's probably two-thirds of your size. Two-thirds. So smaller, smaller. Yep, smaller. Yeah, it's, yeah. I, um, it, as part of my history, I had a, um, a very uh, a formative experience with a trollkin as a boy and have a very keen interest in the elder races. So would I um can I make some kind of roll to see if it well, rings a you bell? guys are looking around, you can see signs of food, uh, waste, etc. that's being sort of left around. The the, the dwarf is being pushed into the corner. Um you know, Yagenvar is the one that sort of has um, succeeded in the track roll and sort of you know, points out the detail, but um the more you guys look at it, you realise that there is no big footprints. Um there's nothing there that sort of says big hulking units. It tends to be a blur of um, smaller feet everywhere. And you've struggled to get a number, but you can say that there's easily more than half a dozen, if not closer to a dozen. Whoa. I mean, these are trollkin we're talking about. Like, it's, it's D. If we're going to encounter uh, them now, they're just going to scurry off. So this was, you're picking that this was sort of like about, I'm just trying to think, okay, time-wise. Yeah, so this would have been last night. They'd, um, they've definitely sort of stopped here, had a break, and then headed on again. But you're picking that um, it would have been probably um, eight hours, maybe ten hours behind. So you've... You've made up a whole half day on where they were before. Mm. So, um, yeah. So basically, they've had a short break, but it's um, it was before the night ended, and um, they've definitely travelled on a little bit from here. But you, you know, given the fact that the last sort of six to eight hours has been all in day. Um, you wonder where they've gone to. 
Well, that Jesus Christ. Based on that information that you just said, you know, just the fact that, um, as Jagenvar just said, Trollkin don't like to be running around in the in the day. So um, sometime, sort of within an hour or two from here, they um, they probably found a way to hole up. And it's getting to early evening now as well. Yeah, you guys are around sort of three, four o'clock. <sighs> Should we make camp? Um, and do you want to do your fancy? Your fancy stockade, mud stockade. I, I can do that. Is it dusk now? No, no, it's still only sort of mid to late afternoon. But um, as Jakinvar pointed out, um, Trollkin don't tend to sort of run around in daylight. But as you guys hit night time, do you want to be running around where Trollkin can run and see? I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing that if we hit them in the daylight, they'd scatter because then we'd be able to retrieve the dwarf without combat. We well, def definitely need to get them in the daylight, don't we? I think it would work to our advantage. Can we discern that we'd be able to catch them in the next couple hours with daylight? Or are they probably still too far ahead for us to be able to catch up? It's hard to work out. You know that they've probably had this camp during the night time and they've continued on afterwards. But, um, yeah, it, it's hard. The problem is it, it's going to be close. Okay. So are they traveling at night, camping during the day, while we're traveling during the day and camping at night? Hard to tell because it's only all happened within like a 24-hour period. I guess just push on until we decided we're going to camp, unless you guys are wanting to camp here now. We, the, the nearer we get to them, the nearer we're likely to encounter them in the dark, I'd imagine. Wouldn't it? Yeah, that's the underlying the, the hint. Yep. <laughs> G, G, GM's basically saying... One of you, one of your characters, just sort of tweaked to the fact that uh, yeah, they don't like being in daylight. Um, but the closer you get to them at night time, the more likely it is that you guys are going to be at the disadvantage. So we're we saying that we camp here, so we're a bit of a distance away from them, and then get up super, super early and see if we can catch up to them in the daylight tomorrow. Jagenvar is pretty quick to work out that you guys are definitely making ground on them. Um, um, but yeah, there is still a time lag between them. Yep. The haste rather helps. It does, doesn't it? So what's the outcome, guys? Camping or following? How about we camp and I just corporate to spy on them again because Jorgenfar is not the kind of person to think that Trollkin are about to screw me o screw him over as he discorporates. Yeah, they're likely to have less power, aren't they? I reckon that's a good guy. Okay, so that mean would suggest that you're wanting to camp as well, because uh, it takes uh, Josh. Oh, there we go. There's the masonry roll. Okay, knock off five magic points, Josh, off your total. What was this for? Uh, the form set, mud, earth, etc., um, to be able to um, be able to do the palisade. Cool. Okay, Jagenvar, uh, let's do your ceremony roll. Just as long as it's not a fumble, it's all good. Ah, uh, yeah, just like you're augmenting it. You're taking your time to prepare and do the stuff. Oh yeah, that's right. Yep. <laughs> nice. Man, I wish I could fucking mark this for experience, but no. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That that raises it by what, fifty percent, something like that? Yeah, but in the new the rules it's um it definitely sort of makes a difference. It's sort of like and uh, talking to yourself and three, two, one, click. and um, you literally just slip straight out of your body and are off and away onto the um, spirit plane. You guys see the, the roiling black cloud, like a little thunderhead sort of appear above his, um, his body when, you, when he leaves. Um, 
it's not as um, aggressive towards you guys now as it was the first time. Um, okay, so you sort of into the spirit plane and you just take a while just to get your bearings. Um, you look around and work out what is and vaguely southeast um, as much as you can tell in here. Um, you do see some funny bits and pieces, so not not too far to your south is this ribbon of a bluey green light, and it sort of runs from from west to east, east to west, whichever way you want to go, um, on a slight diagonal from where you are. Um, it's got, you know, it, it looks interesting that's sort of like a aurora borealis you know just that um that neat effect it um has running along the line um you see you know a few bits and pieces around you nothing aggressive um you do have a look see and head off in that sort of southeast direction uh having a go um just give me a scan roll it's the best skill i can think of to actually use Okay. Uh, uh. Okay, you're heading you know down in um, that direction. You're sort of looking around. You haven't seen anything um, so far. Um, just roll your power. Just just hit a power roll, just so I can see what happens. Do I roll for current or for? Ah, uh, for you. Yep, your one. Your one. Do I roll, yep. roll current power or maximum? I know. So just roll your power times five. Yep. I'm asking if I should roll for the current power or my power now that I have five points spent on this corporate. Oh no, no, just, just power. So it's the actual um, stat, not the not the magic points. Anyway, um, I succeeded on my power roll. Cool. So you haven't attracted anything to come and big nasty you. You do notice that there is um, a cluster of light, though. Um, it's a multitude of um, bodies. Okay, and multitude means how many? Uh, you can't tell from this distance, but can I approach. You can approach. Um, okay, as you get there, you see something. Okay, there's a horde of little bodies. You, you you think that there could be as many as 20 in there, but you also notice that there's some more serpentine uh, spirits there as well, uh, including one that is glowing like really, 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 really hot compared to you. Is it that much stronger? Oh, yeah. Ha! Huh. The little bodies, are they... Do they resemble Trollkin and also um, Serpentine Spirits? That registers as Earth-related to me. Um, can I roll for something to recognize what all the snaky spirits might be? Yeah. So you're not certain if it's Serpentine or Draconic or um, just... Um, lizard-like or or whatever but um one of those one of those spirits is incredibly powerful um can i roll something to determine what they might be yep you can roll your int i will do so in times how many uh depending on your success level i'll tell you how much information okay it's something um it reminds you of um, some of the lizards that um, your shaman used to sort of park in front of you um, and when you sort of had different animals. So, yeah, you, you think it's a lizard of some sort. The it's other bodies... Likely not draconic. Nah, definitely not a dragon. Okay. It might want to be a dragon, but it's... Well, yeah. 
uh, the other bodies? You notice that the smudgy sort of, um, there's definitely an element of um, darkness, you know, so t- <laughs> in mechanical terms, they seem to be strong in darkness runes. Um, everyone has a taint of whatever their, their main rune affiliations, etc., are to a certain degree. Um, but, you know, you're pretty sure that these um, hordes of different ones are mainly... I mean, if I can sense the darkness rune in what I will presume to be Trollkin, can I also sense what the other runes are in the more powerful sorts? No, the um, that beast is about the best that you can get off that really, really bright one. You do notice, though, that there is a couple of sort of not um, more powerful spirits, but a couple of bigger ones. So while you can see the cluster of, um, you know, all these little ones sort of, you know, mingling in and around this area, you do notice a couple of ones that are uh, big beasties. So and it's a bit like the um, the lizards. You can see that there's a lot of smaller ones, but that big bright one is, again, a bigger physical being as well. Effectively, what I'm saying is that there's some smaller creatures and then there's some bigger creatures in amongst that mix. And one partic- and one that's particularly large and also apparently more powerful than I? That's pretty impressive, man. Um, definitely stronger than you. Um, not horrendously stronger. Yeah, man, if it's stronger than me, noticeably, it's stronger than any human. At that point, I'm just going, okay, shit's going down. It reminds you of your master. Okay, so I have 17 power. Strength-wise. I have 17 power, yes? Yep. Something registers as stronger as me when it has five or more power than I do. And if it has five more than me, it's going to have 22. Humans can't have 22. It's not possible. Uh, not normally, yeah. It is, well, maybe if the hero quest is some such. Exactly, yeah. Right, well, um, I know enough in the broad sense that even if we're going to ambush these people, there's still, what, 20 trollkin plus whatever larger things are amongst them, so that is quite something. Yeah, you're pretty sure... That these guys aren't like as much as they're in a cluster, it's not like all jumped on top of one another. Um, but yes, they are spread out and around some sort of grouping, like some sort of encampment. There is a number of them there. Yeah, no, I, 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 I figured kind of. Yeah, right. I will return to the group and return to my physical body. And your. Back in the room. Yay. I will stretch my arms overhead. I will look at the dwarfs and say, you're not going to ask me about voices again now, are you? Silver tongue smiles at you. Right, well, I have found a number of trolls, and there are a good few more than we had anticipated. There are 20 or so trollkin there, which in and of itself would, well, I do not fancy something of a battle against such a group. There are also larger things amongst them, though. They seemed lizard-like, absolutely reptilian, and one in particular was very, very powerful. More powerful than any man who is not a powerful hero. They are not some manner of force that you can simply run over without a second thought. Yeah, that does seem like inordinately a lot. Uh, we have to try. And it's not. Can't leave our dwarf with them. Was the dwarf there? Yes. Perhaps the odds will return to our favour in the morning. 
you can do so, although I think they will be traveling at night as well. That said, Yorgon says, given how many there are, we might wish to try negotiate or something else along that, those lines, rather than storming in. There are rather many of them. Although, I do admit, I am not entirely certain what they might enjoy having. This is all a bit strange and foreign to me. Silvertang spits and says, fucking dealing with trolls. Great, now we're intermediaries between trolls and dwarves. How did we get ourselves into this? I just want to know how you would want to defeat a group of trolls numbering 20 and then some when we are with five, yes. Um, he sort of looks pointedly at um, the ex of uh, Umga. Yes, there is a dwarf who's a warrior, apparently, that I know I saved his life. You're still very welcome. Um, do you fancy yourself defeating 25 trolls? Um, well... <laughs> Personally, I don't think I could defeat 25 trolls, but uh, Umgar, you know, he's he's a different matter. As long as nothing sneaks up and fucking jabs him in the ass. But I, I, I would expect, you know, us or you to be sort of looking after his six. I would be expecting uh, one of you or all of us to be protecting his six. You know, that's a, that's a technical term, you know, six. Yes, a very technical term. That is right. Um, given everything, and given that we have not very much to do while camping, I'm going to look through everyone and say, would you all mind if I summoned some manner of spirit and bound it to me so I could use it in this upcoming fight? Because it might be rather useful. Also, hi. Okay, what do you want to... Um... <laughs> What do you want to grab? I'm going to try grabbing one of those passion spirits because you made them sound cool. <laughs> yeah, they are. <laughs> They're also fucking dangerous. I'm not, I'm not going to pretend. I'm not going to pretend I can justify this very well. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, um, yeah, they're fucking cool, but they're also really, really dangerous. Uh, <laughs> dangerous is fine. Dangerous is fine. Actually, I might just get up early tomorrow and then do it because I'm down five power points right now. Oh, wait, no, no, I don't have to do that. I'm going to grab five power points from my storage item and then do the summoning. Okay, so if you summon it, you have to spend magic points to bring it. But then, of course, whatever magic points you spend has reduced what you've got to be able to battle. So your discorporation um, has meant that your magic points have dropped personally. So then you'd summon it, and then you'd enter the, um, the combat to try and control it. Yep. Can I use five of them, please? To... I have an item where I have stored some magic points. Can I just refit? Yeah, thanks. So assume for now that I'm back up to... Ah, uh, you can't... No, no, so you can't refill you, but what you can do is use those to to do the summoning. Ah, well, I will do that. And also, I have the Control Passion Spirit spell. Yep, so yep. Does, does that not... Yeah, right. So, so, but, um, so the yeah. difference between control and dominate and command is with control, you have to enter uh, a spirit combat with them. And once you've beaten them, then you cast the control spell on them. Um, and it only lasts for five minutes at a time. So uh, unless you've got a binding enchantment made that you can actually put it into along the way. Um, so you, so the, <laughs> what... Yeah, so you can get it, but every five minutes you're going to have to recast the control spell, which will be automatic success once you've done the initial one. I mean, what if I summon it here and then tell it to move over in yonder direction and possess one of the stronger tr uh, creatures around? Yep, you can never go with that. Yeah, it's not going to be very useful if it possesses a trollkin, because, you know, waste of time. 
but there's stronger swords around that we could benefit from. If it's a fear spirit, or God knows what else. So unless you roll like a critical success or something on the um, summoning, whatever magic points you put into the summoning will be the limit of the strength of it. So if you put 10 magic points into the summoning, then its maximum power will be 10. I'm not very experienced with these matters, oh, Seely. Um, what would you recommend? As in, is there a lower bound where they're just not at all useful? Well, the problem is, of course, when it goes into um, when it goes into the combat, so you, you can have two problems. For you to control it, you've had to beat it in spirit combat, which is then burnt all of its magic points, which then means that you've controlled it. Hey, cool, I've got it. But then when it goes to try and attack them, it's only got low magic points, so it's not going to be any use to actually um, do stuff without it having like a day to to um, repower um yeah it's it's one of those things where it almost becomes self-defeating because you've ended up depleting the battery you send it off it's got an empty battery it then fails in its sexual attempt to um to possess someone and do it unless it's a very very weak this is starting to look less and less practical by the minute you know yep <laughs> It's a catch-22 between um, the different magic systems. So um, with with um, sorcery, it's just the spell versus its power, its magic point, sorry, and it's um, it, it's then still fully charged and can go off and do whatever you want it to do. So like using it as an instant summon and sort of send it off actually becomes really, really um, viable. Uh, as a shaman, it's usually done sort of more in preparation, um, do the things you can bring it in, but unless you've already got it, um, its true name, its ability, you know, it's one that you um, can sort of call upon um, that you've already sort of mastered, then it becomes harder because you're you're actually killing the battery in the process of trying to use it. Hmm. At least in a short term sense. I'm going to look to Saren and say, would you like to learn a spell, Saren? I can offer that. <laughs> I was going to bring it up as uh, spell spirit. I have summon and control spell spirit, so I can do that. Yep, that's right. And for every, say, say if it knew blade sharp, for every round that you beat it, you learn another point of the spell up to whatever the maximum it knows is. Do you get to choose, oh. how do you determine what spell it is? You beat it up and find out. So it's random. <laughs> it's random. You don't you don't summon a blade sharp spirit. No, not unless you already know the blade sharp. So the what happens is over time, a shaman builds up like a, a database basically, and um, says, "Oh, I need uh, blade sharp um, such and such. I'll dial up old Paddy over there and um, get him to come and do it." Right. Got you. <laughs> tell you what. Tell you what. I'll summon a spell spirit. I'll beat it up. Can I? Have it tell me its name. Is that yes. something I can yep. do? Once you've once you've um, beaten it in the spirit combat, um, you know the normal practice is the first thing you do is get it to tell you its its name, and then um, go from there. Yep. Man, I'm going to have a fucking huge note page if this becomes complex. You know what? Let's do that. I'm going to summon a spell spirit and pray that it has a very useful blade shot spell. Also, or light. Yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't have to be blade sharp, you know. It, 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 there's a lot of useful spells around. What I did want to ask, if I know a spell at a certain level, can I teach it at a lower level too? So you don't particularly teach it. Um, it's the same process as the um, person dials up. You, know, you bring up the spirit and you set it into, um, say, fight against Saren. And then if for every round that he beats it is the level of spell that he can learn. So he might try to learn Blade Sharp 4, but he may only win three rounds of combat and hence only learn three points of it. Rune quest rules kind of imply that um, shamans can teach other people spirit magic. Yep, yep. And that's how they go through the process. But the mechanic is the, um, the ah, combat is where I they learn it, it. I get it. I get it. Okay, fair enough. Then, you know what? Let's do it. Young okay. has something to keep himself occupied during camp. Yeah. So what do you? Um, so how many magic points you got in your storage thing? Um, at max, I think it's something like twelve. Or so yeah, twelve. Okay. So if you were to spend, say, seven or eight, 
it's got yeah, a it's, spell with a good. It's got a good chance of bringing up a decent spell spirit. Yeah, let's do that. Let's go with. Let's go for that. Sure. Okay, so uh, rolling your ceremony skill, and then roll your summon. I shall roll for it. It's <laughs> not a fumble. Just no, about. So you spend a while sort of waffling out a whole lot of um, noise and sort of tapping on your drums, etc. And then um, it didn't seem particularly effective. It's just your mind's not in it tonight just with what you're doing. You're, you're a little bit put out the fact that you've just run into some sort of um, lizard-like creature that's actually more powerful than you. Okay, but your summon works. And um, so yeah, how many magic points were you putting into the, the summon? Didn't we, didn't we decide on eight? That seems yep. about right. Cool. Okay. So I will roll for a spell spirit. Just give me a second. And it is Dark Walk. Yeah, that would be cool. Dark Walk a rune spell. Yeah. Well, what's but the, the cool other one? You can, make it, you can make it the laugh as though with a rune magic. Once you beat it up, you can actually get it to cast it on you. So you can get a rune magic spell spirit as well? Yeah, it's not as simple um like there's magic spirits then there's spell spirits but most spell spirits generally know spirit magic but there are examples that they use of um bringing up rune magic but they can't teach you it but it can cast it on you that's still pretty useful i mean even if it's as simple as finding a healing spirit and then yeah well that's a different matter entirely but you know maybe i should invest in summon healing spirits yeah, once you get into that whole sort of, oh, I should invest in this spirit, it gets to be a really long list. Roll 20 doesn't mind if I make a very long list, I think. No. Okay, so just uh, rolling some magic points here. Mm -hmm. When I get back to the right screen, you summon a spirit, it turns up. Okay, and it's an uh, interesting spirit. It's sort of looking at you quizzically, sort of like, it looks like it just got out of the bath. You interrupted it while it was doing other things. Is it a, get, is it it a gives cool. you an upset and coy look. Is it a glamour? <laughs> I'm, going <to laughs> glamour spirit. Spirit. I'm going to tell the spirit in spirit speech, I'm really very terribly sorry, ma'am. I'm still a little new at this, but don't mind me too much. Okay. So, uh, spirit combat. Your magic points are? Your personal uh, magic points are? They are now 12, because I just corporated earlier. Yep. Okay. Defensively they, defensively, they are 16, because I do have a fetch. That's right. So, okay. So, um, just roll... Either hit your power roll or uh, roll 1d100. I will... Uh, a 70 or lower is a success for me, yes? Uh, I'm not committing to that it at the moment. It has 8. It has 8. I have 12, so I have 4 higher. No, you just saw me roll 8, that's all. I mean, yes. But, okay. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay, I rolled 61. What's your roll? 40, roll 40. Okay, roll the D3. I shall. Do you want to know how to roll to yourself? Uh, yeah. No, I'm just keeping them up. I love throwing them up. Okay. <laughs> I just rolled 02 on my second roll. Damn. Yeah, no, that's, that, that's going to succeed all right. But I think... Okay, that's you succeed as well. As well. Yep. Am I starting to figure out what kind of spell I'm learning yet? Or does that come ah, later? Ah, no. Three, damn. Okay, so uh, you've lost three. It's now lost three. Okay. Yep. Yep, you right. did work out You did work out fairly quickly, though, that yes, it had eight. And uh, you've got 12, so you're still at that 70%. Okay. Uh, I guess I'm going to keep rolling. Third roll. Yep. Man, it's rolling pretty well by now. Uh, yeah, this it's done well. Yeah. So it uh, it succeeded as well. So Wait. I rolled two as well. So we're still at exactly the same starting position. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Isn't it at four now? Uh, it is. You've done one and three. Is that right? One and two. Yes. One and right. One and two. Yes. So it would be at five. Well, I'm at. 12. Oh no! You, no, and you got a two as well. Yep, so you've done six points now, and it's done... Uh, I, I don't think a 28 would have succeeded. 
Remember, I have a fetch defensively. It's actually pretty hard. Oh, to, like, yeah. Sorry, yes. I keep forgetting that a, one. A, a, two, a two succeeds no matter what. No matter how high I'm getting, a two is going to succeed. But yep. 28, yeah. You're correct. Uh, keep okay, forgetting about so, fetch. Yeah, it's a very nice cloud. Okay, so hang on. So you've done one, two, three, four, five points of damage. Yep. Okay, so it's down to three, and I've done the three points, so you're down to nine. So it's now, uh, you've got an 80% chance, and it's down to only an 05. Yeah. Well, there you go. And that should be it. Yep, you got it. Okay, now we go to the fun sheet. In... Okay, Gods of Glorantha. Easiest way to do this is we go to the Ancestor Worship page. Okay, can you give me a percentile roll, please? Gladly. In fact, I'm probably going to need a couple. So 94. Mm, pretty high. Okay, it knows a single spell. Okay, can you roll again, please, uh, for the percentile? Consistently high rolls. Whether it's good or not remains to be seen. 90. It knows visibility. Visibility? Yep. So it's the spell that... Um, so visibility is the spell that you cast on a spirit to make it visit, um, basically cross over. Um, it's like throwing flour up into um, an invisible you thing it and showing it. To make, it's basically the counter to discorporation. Yep. Materialize. Yeah, materialize, but it also means then that other people can also cast spells, etc. at it. So up until that point, only you with your second sight can see it, but as soon as you cast visibility on it, um, other people can attack it as well. Well, I have room, as in I have enough int left that I can just mark visibility on my sheet, so I will do so. Yep. I might as well. Yeah, it's a bloody handy spell, uh, especially for when it comes to ghosts and things like that. Yeah, or, you know, foreign shamans trying to spy on us. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah. I will do that. I have written it down. Can I cast that control spell now to see if I can have it tell me its name? Yep. So just uh, power times five. It got a success once, right, for three points. Yep. Annoying, because then I only have nine left. So, no, no, so power rather than magic points. So it's still just your 85% chance plus the... Um, um... Then I'm casting that. Well, yep. there you go. Easily cast. Okay, its name is Farsia. F-A-R-S-E-E-R. -E -E Thank you. I will find a place on my character sheet to start noting down spirits that I know of. Yep, and at the end of that, you've learnt your your visibility spell. All right, that is very nice. And then from now on, if anyone really wants to learn the spell, they can ask me. Okay. Excellent. Okay, so that's taken all up around three, four hours. Yeah, I'm going to get sleep in for the rest of my time because Yorgonvar is pretty tired as well. He will be after that. He was most mortified, of course, that he was actually damaged. I'm going to tell him that it's okay. And that I'm very sorry that I interrupted his business and that he can go back to it now if he'd like. Okay. Or, uh, you, can stay in, or you can stay and chat if you'd really prefer. I don't mind. <laughs> actually, um, because you won't call him up till later, he, because he succeeded against you, he'll get a power gain roll. Okay. So, um, ah, yes. so we'll do that now. Um, you just make sure you mark your power, tick your power on your sheet. The spirit itself has, um, if you roll percentile, anything above. So basically it's got a, anything under 65 on the percentile dice, its power will go up. Right. Nope. But, okay, so it's got a uh, power of eight and it only knows the one spell. Um visibility and can you mark it down as being malign it's not a happy spirit eight power malign so now i have on my sheet for spell spirit visibility eight power malign yep so um generally the spirits when you summon them will come in as basically friendly 
um, neutral or malign. Uh, those that have got aggressive spells, uh, malign will automatically seek to attack you. Those that are neutral will tend to react to whatever you do. Uh, those that are friendly will sort of, hey, buddy, what you up to? Woo -hoo. Is there a way to figure? Out, is there a way to grab spirits of a certain nature? Or is it mostly trial and error? Trial and error. Um, it's also handy, of course, to um, you know later on when you take on apprentices, um, you know, or assistants. Then, of course, um, the the sneaky thing is you get them to sort of help contribute points towards the summoning, so that that leaves you in a a stronger um, state for doing it. And then um, there's the whole priestly, you know, and sort of a cult way of doing it is um, where the um, divine spells, you know, sort of worship some demon. Um, they um, mind link, and of course, the all of the magic points from the people in the mind link are sacrificed in the summoning spell. And then that leaves the priest fully able to function, um, but can also use all of their their magic points, their magic, etc., um, for doing it. So, like, um, you know, some of those um, classic movie scenes where they're all round, you know, the coven, the coven is round the um, summoning um, brazier, etc., sort of all pouring the stuff. And there's actually mechanics for being able to do all that stuff. That's cool. So. It's actually um, yeah, something that, if you did on a fairly regular basis, um, could actually get quite good. But the, the biggest limit for you is actually the number of magic points you can put into the summoning. So a, a decent, an average magic spirit generally has a 3d6 plus 6 power. So, you know, an average of somewhere around the um, 17 mark. So if you're putting in less than that, then you're limiting what you can potentially get. Yeah, I'd need either apprentices or a way better magic point storage item. Cause, yeah. Exactly, yep. Yeah, yeah. All right, then. I mean, hold up. Do I need apprentices? Or can I tap Saren here and go, you're not casting any spells tonight. Lend me some magic. Yep, and um, what you can do is get him, you know, um, you can train him up to who, um, A, be an assistant, and two, um, is that um, he could actually refill your battery uh, himself. So you could, you know, you could be emptying your magic point storage and then um, getting him to sort of spend an hour or two sort of recharging it as well. Well, we'd have to talk about that some other time, but okay, it's good to know that it doesn't really take very much special training or whatever to assist a shaman with some magic. That's right, yep. And then um, the advantage, of course, for assistance is you get to learn really cool spells. Yep. Um, well, I now have a way to teach people visibility if need be. All right. Yep. And what was the other spells you already had? Man, I have a. They're all my. They're all on the magic page on my sheet. If you want to look. Yep. Just have a quick squeeze because um, some of them you'll already know. Mind you, uh, the whole whether or not they're ranged or blah blah blah. Roll twenty is a bit annoying about it. It often resets it, yep. so I've given up on that. Yep. But assume for now that I know that not all my spells are ranged and so on and so on. Yep. So all the enchantments, um, you basically have to go through a slightly different process for teaching them. But you know, um, so effectively, you will know a spirit that will teach heal and protection. The little, the smaller one point spells, less so. Um, but um, no, I, have protection. I have protection for man. Yep. But you'll probably actually know the spirit's name for that. Maybe we should figure that out a bit later during the week yep. and not during a session because we are taking yep. up a bit, kind of a lot of time. No, that's cool. Um, well, we're back to just you and Josh at the moment. And that's also fair. Yeah. So um, the question is, do you guys want to try and continue with just two of you trying to run sort of five or four characters? I mean, I don't mind trying to head over towards that encampment and seeing what is up there, but I don't want to enter a combat where someone else's character is going to do the brunt of the fighting, and it's, <laughs> going, to be very, it's going to be fairly serious if a fight does break out. 
These are not very real pushovers from what I surmise so far. Yeah, the um the dwarvish uh, troll detector sent them in. Okay, so next morning, yeah, uh, you guys get there. You haven't been accosted by anything. Um, that, that's not an issue. Um, you head on over in the early morning, you know, sort of just before dawn sort of truly breaks, and you guys are, are looking over. Um, it, it wasn't actually that far from where you are, probably a couple of hours travel. Um, so you're, you're there just as um, dawn breaks. And can I get a scan roll, please? Okay. You there, Josh? Yay, scan roll. Okay, so you definitely see what's going on. Um, you see several trollkin. Okay, they're at the mouth of a cave. The next morning, we can see several trollkin. Okay. Yep, so you've had to travel. You've spent it. Like basically, you guys have got up 3, 4 in the morning, sort of headed on over, got to this place where... Um, you, you're pretty sure that you saw everyone. It wasn't that far away, but when you get there, you can see several trollkin sort of guarding the entrance to what is a cave. All right then. Very yep. Nice. I was trying to get a picture of a cave that I could actually show at on, but there was nothing that actually just did what I needed it to do. And my drawing sucks. Um. It, you can see from your scan roll that they are, they've got a couple of spears and um, it looks like they've got slings at, at their um, sides as well. Hmm. I suppose it makes sense enough that they're hunkering down in a cave. Yes. It's not really anything suspicious or whatever. I'm just trying to get to another sheet. Trying to make it show up what I wanted to show, but just what I want to show. Is it switched over, Stefan? Uh, it has, although to me it's all dark. Like, just one black box. Oh, wait, no, 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 I can see it now. The lot of us are all the way down there on a hex grid. Yeah. And can you see... Can you, um, so to the right, can you see like a, um, a clear spot as well? To the right? Yeah, so uh, you can yes, see where actually. you guys are. Yep. There is a clear spot, yes. There's only one. It's, sort of, it's not actually a portrait. There's something there, but that's all. There are now two imageless portraits there. Yep. Okay. I just had to move them out from where I had them sort of originally standing so that they can be so you could see them from that angle. Is there anything written underneath them? Or in around that area? Nope. Nothing. That's good because I tried to put stuff onto a, uh, a GM layer with my notes. <laughs> and then I thought afterwards, I wonder if the players can see it. And I can't test it. Because no matter what I do, it always shows it to me. Okay, and the um, scale there is three, three meters per hex. I cast visibility on them. I can see <laughs> that's a good thing to do. <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah, um, let's try to think. There is no invisibility except for divine magic and um, this but I always thought that was one of the most cool spells so I think we're the only ones left on server at the minute yeah I guess my page went out yeah yeah you just sort of dropped off yeah I don't know what happened so you can't see anything uh I couldn't um, it was all black, but then all of a sudden it just said that I was dropped or something. Uh, 
And I can redo Gort now because he's got a character sheet, an image. Uh, yeah, I see now. It's just on a white field. Yeah. No, no graphics. Um, Pretty much. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's there's, something the mount, there's something mountain cave side thing to the north, but yeah, that's it. Yeah. So um, black. All that shadow that you can see is the edge of like the um, the hill. So I've tried to, rather than sort of putting all of the graphics in on this one, I've tried to just do it by um, what you guys can see rather than sort of filling in the rest of it. Okay, so two tro uh, two trolls in there. I was about to say two trolls there. Uh, you guys have sort of come upon them. Uh, had a look. There's the five of you there. Um, at the moment, Stefan, you've got back another quarter of the magic points. So um, you've got four more magic points than what you had after you finished your summoning. Then I should have 14. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, the question becomes, what do you want to do? Go and talk to them? Go and introduce yourselves as food? Um, I mean... <laughs> I don't fucking speak dark tongue, and I don't know anyone who does. The fucking dwarves aren't going to speak dark tongue. It does make it challenging just to get the message across. I speak crossbow bolt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not particularly well, though. Mm. About a third better than I speak dark tongue. <laughs> <laughs> What's a third of nothing? Hmm. 33% as I was taking it. Yeah. 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 A third of nothing is nothing. Um, but the, um, yes, the, the problem is trolls, like some trolls do speak other languages, uh, most notably trade talk. Um, some do, but not the ones that stand outside of a cave guarding things. Yeah. And you do know from your experiences, um, Yaganvar, that um, not all trolls try to eat everything straight off, but um, it is a very common theme of trolls. I mean, okay, but... Uh, I'm trying to think of what good might come out of moving there, and I'm just drawing blanks. Are we going to continue on with this without... Um... Neil? Yeah, I'd I'd rather not, honestly. Yep, I was gonna say, yeah, if you guys down if you guys go down the combat option, it's better if the other two are here because um yeah, it could get pretty brutal. Do you do you have anything very clever planned? Yeah, I'd prefer not to continue. I was gonna say if we are though, I was definitely just gonna build a little rampart for me there to steady my crossbow and I was just gonna start launching bolts at him. You should just have. You, you could create a number of parapets for us to hide behind murder holes. <laughs> yeah, but that was that was definitely my plan. Was to just do that. How you can he, see uh, the irony of that, eh? Like every year, this dwarf goes, he just goes and puts up <laughs> some sort of defensive screen. It's how the Russians defeated the Mongols. They just kept building palisades. That's quite cool. Oh, okay. So we'll hold it up there. The um, and we'll sort of negotiate with the trolls uh, offensively in the next session. 